He spent over 20 years actually in the U.S. where he got a certificate in cultural intelligence from the yeah. center there, which that's very interesting. I didn't know there were such certificates. Yes. And he has since uh, built a business around um, Emirati and Arab um, cultural intelligence, how to build businesses, how to understand the culture here in the Gulf. Um, he's actually an entrepreneur himself, yeah. and he has run over 40 businesses and ventures over his career. Which so is amazing. A little yeah. bit more. Look at him for verification. The Arab culturalist is another one. You know. And I really, really liked his mission, which he continues to live every day, which if I'm quoting it correctly, to promote the region by building peaceful coexistence through education, training and development programs, to foster cultural intelligence. Absolutely. Which is great. Right? Some of <coughs> back to the community, and I think that's what the speaker series here is all about, is finding relevant topics for our community. So we're really happy to have you to talk about Ramadan this morning. Glad to be here. And um, I will leave it to you. And again, it's an open session, as we always say. If anyone has questions, please feel free. We're not in a time crunch, so uh, you know, Mr. Nasir can stay as well later if you have any questions. So. Yep. I'm here to fulfill the mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> so really, why I do what I do is due to the fact that throughout life, uh, especially here now in Dubai, we still go through this where we meet, or we try to do business, maybe we have a lunch business or a conference, and we walk away from each other, never talk to each other in an intimate or, uh, let's say, like personal way, because there is this barrier between us. It's always been like this, folks. There was a time when there was rich and poor people. They didn't communicate. They just enslaved one another, the rich to the poor. It's called the French Revolution, right? And then there was a time when we did uh, black and white. Until now, there are places where there is a separation between these two races just because of the color. And there was a time even we went further to the point where we did blue eyes <coughs> superior to other than blue eyes. World War One, World War Two. Imagine, if you really think about it and you read about it, you go like, my God, if I had lived in that era, what would I have done? Would I have been one of those people that thought that I am better just because of the color of my eyes? <coughs> Actually, I don't know if you've ever seen the um, uh, experiment, 1973 on YouTube, have you seen it? Blue Eyes Versus, it's a teacher that did it in the school in, uh, in California. It's pretty good, you should check it out. And um, then we did Jewish, Holocaust, you know, and uh, now I think we do in Muslim, right? But I really saw that from a long time ago, it's just that the people when they spoke to me, they had no idea who are an Arab is. So Dubai to them was like, it sounded like Dublin. I said, I don't look like Dublin to you, do I? <laughs> Come on, black hair, hello, I do have hair. And uh, then when you say Arab, the word Arab, Middle East, uh, Saudi Arabia, the word Arab, rings a bell and says, so you are uh, an Arab? I say, yeah, the definition. I uh, say, are you an oil rich Arab? And I always asked in the beginning, they said, I was 17 years old, could just left high school. I said, what is your definition of oil rich Arab? I said, do you have an oil well? I say, yeah, in the backyard. <laughs> what do you mean in uh, oil well? How can I have an oil well? That's true, this is uh, something that happened to me vividly. Uh, many years ago, and uh, I started to talk about America and the things that I know about America, and they said, how do you know so much about America? And this was in North Carolina. And they said, uh, uh, do you, how do you know? Do you read? I said, no, no, I watch TV. I said, oh, you have TVs? I said, yeah, we have TVs. So <laughs> how can you have a TV in a tent? I said, you just asked me if I'm an oil rich Arab and own an oil well. Now you're asking me if I still live in a tent? This is early 80s, you know. And I realized, my God, and you know, I was very happy when CNN was invented because now we could spell some even other countries outside the U.S. in a correct manner. And uh, my journey is to really, why do we keep ourselves from wanting to understand somebody else's? Why? Why are we so judgmental towards them when we have not even met them and spoke to them yet? And this happens to a lot of things, not just people, you know. And so therefore, uh, what happens is that you are programmed, but you think they are programmed. The human being. You are being told. Today we live in an era where Ramadan is religion, and everybody is like, what is this religion? You know, we are in the 21st century. Uh, religion is not for civilized, sophisticated cities like Dubai. Come on, grow up. Like, but who told you that? 
you know, who made this up to the point where we are so not willing to touch religion with a 10-foot pole. We even try to say, I'm Christian, or I am Jewish, or I'm a believer. You know, it's, it's like something not befitting, especially when we are in the elite society level. I don't know. So uh, I tackle all of these issues, and I talk to the, about them. We have fun with it. We enjoy a conversation that it stems from facts, and also without offense, without disrespect, we just, when we are facing a fact, we should talk about it. And so therefore, when people come here, I say, allow me to explain to you what's on your mind. Always, always, what do you think is the most important questions that's on people's mind when they come here? What do you think? The thing that is, I'm asked number one most repeated question to me throughout the last 30 plus years, yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, but usually they come in direct. Yeah, they don't say that because people are afraid they are shy, especially the ladies, since I have lots of ladies in the crowd. Say, so how do you keep your white dress clean? I say, thanks a lot. Uh, but watch your language. We don't wear dresses, okay? Yeah, we call it Kandora. That's the official name. Yeah, Dishdasha in uh, some other countries like Kuwait or in Saudi Arabia, it's Thob. You don't have to memorize, but it has names everywhere you go. I uh, say, so we have dry cleaning. <laughs> and ladies look at me as in like, nope, wrong answer. <laughs> uh, you already know the answer, then why are you asking me? I'm like, really, we don't have water. This is a country that's desert, and we have dry cleaning. It's very cheap, very affordable, so therefore, it's like you mean to tell me your wife does not do laundry for you? Say, oh, my wife does laundry for me. Is that what you worried about? My wife has never done laundry for me. What do you, what we have, you know, other systems. And they say, no, no, you guys are not nice. You, you pick a color like this that gets dirty so quickly. And I said, okay, listen, don't worry about it. I have four wives to do laundry every day, okay? <laughs> Split the load on them, all right? Yeah. So that opens up the door for us to really say, ah, oh, I can, you know, I can reason with this guy. At least he's willing to talk about the untalkable or untouchable God. And this is what we are here for today. I'm going to focus on a religious aspect. It's called Ramadan. But really, people ask me from the silliest question, then we dive deeper. But they always, always ask about the superficial. Why white? Why black? You know, originally when I asked my dad why we were white, because I had no idea, he said, why, what's wrong with white? I said, there we go again, parents to kids, right? How dare you ask this question? What's wrong with the question? I'm asking you, it's very obvious that everybody's wearing white. Why do we wear white? I said, why, what color would you like, mister? I said, okay, man. So I went on to tell the people, what's, why white? Everybody thinks white here in the desert because of what? Heat, yeah? It reflects heat. As soon as I answered that, I, was, I put myself in deep trouble because immediately you jumped at me and said, then why do you force the women to wear black? Say, <laughs> so, my God. Uh, I don't know about forcing because I went to my mom. I said, does my dad make you wear the black abaya? She said, your dad makes me do nothing. <laughs> so, okay, all right. Enough is enough with parents. I'm not going to refer to my parents anymore. What's wrong? And so uh, I, I try to see is white uh, reflective to heat and is black observant to heat? And is that the only contention we have with it? On why we so against it? What's wrong with black? It's the beautiful gala dress dinner, right? Or gala dinner dress. It's the beautiful tuxedo. Uh, is it really if we overcome that white does not reflect heat and why black does not observe heat, are we willing to accept it? Are we? See, because right now I, I challenge everybody that find me in the science where it says that this reflects heat, this reflects light, it doesn't say heat. And black observes light, does not say it observes heat. See, because we have a mindset here, everybody wants a white car, it reflects heat. So I bought a black car, my dad freaked out. He said, didn't I just tell you? No. I said, Dad, listen, I mean, I just want to diffuse this thing. There's nonsense, but you guys go on living, telling us the wrong thing, and you want us to believe in it. Just listen to me. It's a black car with black tires. Outside, it's all black asphalt we drive on. And inside, come look, it's a black battery inside of it. Find me one time a black car exploded, overheated, and became dysfunctional, malfunction. Find me. Let's drive to Oman. Come on. And it was just... There is no further to the conversation, but nobody is willing to listen. And I always say, look at polar bear. He lives in Alaska. His white fur is actually translucent, but his skin is black. 
So I started to talk and people listen about something that is very tough, regardless of how educated you are, regardless of what level society you are, I speak to people and they are listening to something that they can reason with from the heart. And I hope that today we can reason with something called Ramadan. And let's see, what is this thing here in Dubai? Why do we have to go through this? What is it all about? And people look at, look, but look at what they're doing, look at what they're doing. Why don't you be part of the change? Why don't you be part of the correct way? Cool? Good? So far so good? Yes. Did I upset anybody yet? <laughs> Throughout the time, I do upset and fix at the same time, so relax, it's all right. Yeah, it's part of the uh, game, you know, we have to talk uh, the honest truth, and sometimes when we are faced with the honest truth, it's tough to digest. It's hard to swallow, you know? It's like, what do you mean black is... Uh, yeah, let's talk about it. You wear black yourself, what's wrong with you? Husband, your husband forced you to wear black today? <laughs> Yeah, right? He bought you that? Well, as a nice man, and he accepts it. Let's start from the bottom up. What does Islam mean? This is one of the biggest, biggest, biggest misconceptions. Um, to submit or surrender. <coughs> in, in every religion, we change it, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, to uh, reflect uh, a certain figure. Here, it's not Mohammedism, because it was told in the last and final revelation that you cannot do that. Sorry, we will preserve the original name, which is the concept of surrender. You surrender what? What do you surrender? Your will. See, ladies, you have kids, right? When your child comes out of the tummy, huh? How old is that one? Uh, 20 months. 20 months, huh? They cannot do anything. You do everything for them. Yeah. I hope we are reminded of that. This is where it stemmed originally, behind every man is a great woman. Today, we all think that the woman walks behind the man. That's not what it is. That there is no man on this earth with worthy of anything without his mother, because she does everything for us. So 24-7, you take care of him, no sleep, no, no uh, you know, everything is given to him. And then, as soon as he's 20 months now, barely walking, not even talking, huh? Yeah? Uh, what's his name? James. James, when you say, James, please, honey, don't touch it, it's hot. What does he do? <laughs> touch it. <laughs> that's what we do. And so that's called free will. You're right, we have choice from when we are little. But do we choose our color? Black and white is not up to us or any color in between. Yeah, But we are so discriminatory. And the, the ironic thing, that's why people come to Dubai to get suntan now. <laughs> we pay money to become darker. When dark was not good at one time. Then do we choose our gender, male or female? So how come female is less than male? Who said? When it's your mother, we just talked about it. Till today, we treat you ladies less for the fact that all over the world, male, female, same education, same degree, same job, same company, same salary. Yeah, why? Even Merkel cannot get it passed in Germany to have equal pay. She cannot get it passed as a law. I don't know what it is. Do we decide our status, rich or poor? You can work hard, but you'll never become a princess or a, uh, or a me, a sheikh. You know, there's status, there's limitation to where we can go with it. It's decided to some people when they're born, they come out with the status. And some of us never attain it. And so therefore, do we decide when and where and how we're going to die? Most of us die without notice a lot of times, you know what I mean? Or if it's notice, it's not the way you want to. So therefore, what do we do with our free will? If my color, my gender, my status is when and where and how I die, when does my life end, is not up to me. What is up to me then? Life is, could be short, could be long. But what matters is, what do you do in it? And what are our choices? Talk to me, ladies. If you say wrong, we will laugh at you. It's OK. <laughs> what do we do with the choices? What are they between what and what? <clears throat> To become a beautiful lady, huh? Be the ultimate beautiful, the most beautiful lady ever. Marley Monroe, I don't know, uh, Jacqueline Onassis, or you want to talk about, uh, you know, Lady Gaga these days? Is that a role model for us? Our kids follow Lady Gaga. She has more than 60 million plus. What is that? Is it for us to become very rich so we can get the most beautiful woman? Because everybody wants to be rich beyond rich, the richest man, the top richest men in the world. You know what I mean? No woman in between, by the way. I don't know why it's all men anyway. How come? Doesn't she get 50% supposedly? But nobody mentions or talks about what the woman contributed to his wealth. 
And so therefore, what do we do? It's important, ladies, folks, to think. Well, can you remind me, can you recall a, a human being that is most renowned in the world because of her beauty or because of his wealth or because of his intelligence? Ask your kids iPad. Who invented iPad? Will they know? She knows. She knows, right? Steve Jobs is forgotten already. Nobody knows about him. But a lot of schools and a lot of places, even when I go to communist China or Russia or go to even, you know, uh, Africa, when I say the most renowned woman, have you heard of her name called Mother Teresa? Have you? Everybody has heard of Mother Teresa. Have you heard of a simple guy named Gandhi? Yeah, see? These guys didn't have money, didn't invent anything. They were just what? Good people. Sought out to create good between humanity of all differences, right? And then we have very famous people such as Hitler. Have you heard of him? Everybody. Ah, Osama bin Laden. What do we know? Any good about them? So your choices are wrong or right, good or bad, up to who? You have free will. Where you extract your information, it's up to you. You want it from your parents, from your culture, from your village, from your teachers, it's up to you. But the Lord said, when I created you, I send you manuals. You must submit to accept me as your Lord. And in the manual, I will send you instruction. Just like when you buy iPhone, it has instruction in it. Yeah? We have to read. Still, it doesn't matter how good you are, you go to your YouTube and say, how do I do this, you know? <laughs> so the creator always is obligated to teach the user, you know, the method. And what to whom? We said to the Lord and submit your free will to God, Eloh, Yahweh, Allah. What's your name? Elena. Elena. So if you go to India, what's your name going to be in India? Um, Elena. I mean, uh, they Elena, Elena, <laughs> come, come, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, Elena. Elena. Uh, if you go to China, how your name is going to be said? <laughs> huh? Say it. With, you don't know English. Come on, Chinese people. I love the accent. Too. <laughs> That's good. Elena, yeah. <laughs> Folks, we have accents all over the world. And so therefore, but she's still Elena. Did we change her name? Why did we change God's name? English is a very young language. Does anybody know how old is English? None of the revelations came in English. I remember when I went to church with some of my friends and the mass was in Latin. And I said, do you speak Latin? He said, no. I said, what are we doing here? He said, it's just a few minutes. It's just... I said, but why is it in Latin? He said, because the Bible is in Latin. I said, the Bible didn't ever come in Latin. Jesus didn't speak Latin. He said, no, he's not Greek. Why, where did the Latin come from? And nobody could talk to me. And people always just stared at me. So why aren't you saying something about it? So therefore, the, the concept here of your name is Elena, and it stays no matter where you go. Originally, I looked, I saw Eloh in Hebrew. That's what Moses, peace be upon him, spoke. And I looked at Jesus, peace be upon him. He spoke a language called Aramaic. And the name is Yahweh. Huh? Or Yoha, then it became Jehovah. You know how things change in time. And then in Arabic is Allah or Ilah. It's the same guy. It's just different twist on the same word. Linguistic. We never. Then all of a sudden we invented English. We changed his name to God. God from Germany. The word good became God. I was like, wow, interesting. Because you know a lot of people ask me, especially old man one time, I'm brand new into a big huge church, a priest, a friend of mine invited me. The old man gets up and goes, excuse me, is your God the same as my God? I said, no, mine is older than yours. <laughs> Everybody booed me in the church and when I asked the question of was Jesus God or Son of God, I'm, I agree with any of you, no problem, let's not fight about nonsense. What was his name? It was not God, it's a new language. And so therefore, in a verse, chapter 49, verse 13, look at inclusiveness. O oh, mankind, we have created you, male and female, and have made you nations and tribe, that you may know one another, uh, that noblest of you in the sight of, uh, of God is the best in conduct. That's it. Best in conduct. Not the most genius, not the most beautiful, not the best, healthiest. Best of conduct. This is it. 
This is all a human being, regardless, Hindus, Buddhists, Jews. And if you ask people, usually, usually yoga or whatever we do, we try to be good as again here Ramadan comes and the point is to do good in Ramadan. Let's hope. Good? Any question? Any question? Pillars of faith, so to accept you believe in Allah, like you hear Muslims, just so you know. So as a surrenderer, you believe that there is one God for all of us. Angels monitor us. Way before we invented the concept of cameras, we have, because behind closed doors, you think you're going to get away with murder? Look at what the people doing to uh, their own people in Syria, you know? And it's been done before, you know? Chambers of uh, torture. You are monitored. It doesn't matter what you do. Every breath, every blink of an eye, you are being recorded. As it says that there is one that records the good deeds on your right and one that records the bad deeds on your left. 24-7. God, even your thought process. Revelations. Books. Go back to it. It says, oh, we have so many and I'm confused. Whatever comes in between all of them is what we should look at. Because mankind, again, we modify and change God's word. But dare we ever modify and change uh, Microsoft Windows? Doesn't everybody download the same thing? So it doesn't matter if you go to uh, east of the world or west or north or south of the world. Microsoft is still the same. Different language, but it's the same window concept. How come religion, we have 500 plus Bibles? We have 128 plus Judaism divisions. And in Islam, you see how it's divided right now before our eyes. Everybody's inventing their own version. There's only one Jesus, one Moses, peace be upon them, and there's only one Muhammad. Good? So the concept that then Revelation and then the prophets are role models, the way they did it was the best way. So therefore, just to symbol, so you have reference. Because if you don't have reference, then we can invent anything we want. And day of judgment, so we can be fair. Otherwise, you are good, you are nice, you do everything the right way, and you get mistreated in this life, and the person gets away with it. That's not fair. huh? Uh, you get blown up when you didn't want to, you die when you didn't feel like it. It's not fair. So therefore, it's a concept. And predestination, no excuses. This is the, the bulk. I, I, as a businessman, when I hire people, uh, we sit and right before the final, okay, I say, this is a book. What do you think? I say, my God, this is the biggest book I've ever seen in my life. I say, it's called the book of excuses. Every excuse in the world that a man or a human being has ever come up with, it's inside, written. So therefore, when I give you a task, there's no excuses. I want the task finished. Whatever it is you are hired for, must be done. So don't come to me with excuses. Always seek to accomplish. And so therefore, Lord will say, regardless if I create you mentally challenged, physically challenged, all these things, you have a way to overcome. And now, instead of saying mentally challenged, we say the people with strong will. We finally figured it out that they are very, actually, they have a concept. Physically challenged, they are, you know, an autism, it's actually genius. Because we've been so judgmental towards him, unfortunately. But God said, no, there is good in everything in front of us and around us. Any good? Any questions? This is just the foundation. Otherwise, when we jump into Ramadan, and this is where I come from when it comes to uh, educating. Uh, I'm not here to just talk about something and you leave me the same way you met me. I left with more confusion than when I started. Although I told you, yes, we fast from crack of dawn, huh? or from break of dawn, because it's not from sunrise. Now CNN writes sunrise. Everybody is making a big mess of it. Now people are eating after a break of dawn till sunrise. They are not fasting anymore. Khalas. If you eat after break of dawn, you finished. So again, misconceptions happens, and therefore I like to set the stage. Good? Any questions? So, when it comes to acting now, you declare God is one, Muhammad is his messenger or last messenger, prayer five times, zakat, two and a half, and one of it, saum. It's not Ramadan. Ramadan is the name of the month, guys. Saum. Saum in Arabi means fasting. And fasting was prescribed in Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, in all. Ask anybody. In the, but we kept modifying fasting till it became suitable to us. Just like today, everybody. Uh, in Algeria, the Minister of uh, Islamic Affairs wants to change Ramadan to 13 days instead of 30. It's too many days in the summer. People, instead of being a long day, just can we cut it short till Asr instead of till sunset, Maghrib, you know? People are weird. What do they think about always? How it affects the economy, how it affects their pocket. Pocketbook, always. So sound fasting is, is a concept of a practice that is being uh, uh, prescribed for humanity throughout time. Why? 
Just remember the first originally that said good conduct. Good? So Hajj, which we go to Mecca once in a lifetime. So really, if you think Hajj once in a lifetime, fasting, zakah prayer, and now you are acting as a Muslim. Do you know Muslims who don't do these things? Yes. I know Christians who do better than these things, actually. So therefore, again, misconceptions. Ramadan. Any questions? Nine months of the lunar calendar. It's a name. One well, of the biggest misconceptions that it's hot because everybody who is, we are surface people, we don't know much and we want to know. So therefore, as soon as we get a little bit of information, it's like 140 characters. That's all we want to know. You can tweet 140 character tweet, but you cannot just know something about something but with 140 character. Ramad means it's, it's hot this year, but we had Ramadan in the winter, didn't we? And it's not hot in Russia, it's not hot in Australia. It's a lunar calendar month. So it's not about torturing you and it only comes in hot time. <laughs> People think, oh my God, why does it have to be? Even the name of it is weird. Ramadan, Ramad comes from hot. What happens during this month? Fasting from break of dawn to sunset. Why do we fast? Uh, everybody always says this word, taqwa, piety, righteousness. What does it mean? Especially the word taqwa, there is no translation for it in the dictionary. If you write Google translation, taqwa does not have translation. It will, it will give you taqwa in English. So what is it? So let's see. How no lawful and unlawful. Just make it easy for you so you remember. How we're going to reach taqwa, piety, and righteousness. No lawful and unlawful. Just remember that. No lawful and no unlawful. What is that? Abstain from lawful. Eating, drinking, smoking, chewing gum, all the above. Anything that enters into your mouth. Why? How do I attain piety and taqwa with this? This is now, we have the right to drink, right? Look, I run and coffee is very important, two and a half cups in the morning. Make a big pot. My wife and I must finish it before we go, you know, on to. I can't have coffee in the morning. Why? doesn't make sense. How can I start my morning without coffee? But I can't. But why? Learn. It's a lesson. When you go to the doctor and say, listen, we need to put you in a strict diet. Your health is very important and we have to go through a process. Do you say, I oh, know I don't want to, but I want my health improved. Okay? I'm not interested in listening to anything you're going to tell me, but I want you to do something about my health and I want to get better. All right? Same thing with uh, fitness. You're not going to like uh, get six pack or become strong and have good, uh, unless you go through an exercise. And so therefore the concept here is to exercise by withholding from what's permissible. And now you learn what we call today discipline. Now you learn what we call today patience. You could have it, but at sunset. So a lot of us say, but uh, this is, uh, there are people who cannot have coffee. They don't even have coffee. They get up every day without coffee, let alone food and drink. You know what I'm talking about. In front of us, we see it. Gandhi, he went on how long without eating till he tried to get the people to believe in his message. And of course, we today we have in Palestine the people who are 33 days now on a strike, and we have the people in Syria who are dying in Yemen from starvation. If you watch the Arab hope maker, the lady from Kuwait that went and lived in Yemen for 10 years, left her wealth, and went to live with the people who are living in shacks, like we used to live 50, 60 years ago. No intimate relationship with spouse. This I didn't get until way later on after I got married and I realized that when Ramadan comes, during the day when I'm fasting, my wife looks really good. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't know what it is. It's all of a sudden I become just like, you know, so. And then I realized that when I break my fast at sunset, there is no desire. And my wife comes near me and she's like the cat, Robin. I'm like, honey, please, I just broke my fast. I don't feel like it. <laughs> just leave me alone. And I was like, what is this concept? Because I want to understand it. Why is it no intimate relationship with your spouse? Of course, not with your girlfriend or boyfriend. And um, I realized that when it's not wanted, it's what, when it's not allowed, it's what? Ooh. We get down on our knees, ladies, to give you a diamond ring. We fly airplanes, we say, would you marry me? Or we dive in the Atlantis. 
but it was not long after that that you become what? A fixture in the house, right? Or you become, we take you for granted. So a lot of men, most women, they say, my husband doesn't pay attention to me, my husband, you know. Why, why, why do men do that? So the Lord is wanting every year for you to practice 30 days. You're not allowed to touch your spouse. And let's see if that works to train your mindset, to th- rethink your position on not taking her for granted and begin to realize the blessings you have. And so therefore, it's because really the whole point of men and other women outside the marriage is the desire, right? Is that you cannot have, it's like territorial, like the lion, you know what I mean? When you have halas, that's it, it's like the kill. This is a species that we have to deal with, and so therefore in dealing with it, and we begin to recognize that, you know, this is something that is very important exercise. Good? Any questions? All right. Unlawful. Ill feelings or thoughts? Huh? Ill feelings. We have them. In Ramadan, you have to, every time you begin, you have to cut. Every time you, you start, you have to cut. You are self-conscious of what you are what doing, thinking. Gossip, backbiting, lying, slander. Guys, it becomes part of society as if it's normal. Look at the media. Fake media, huh? Even the president stands in front of us and tells us a lie as in like if it's okay. As a, we have a video, a joke going on, uh, is that uh, uh, the guy goes to the people in Egypt and he says, we did a survey and we found out that 55% of the Egyptian population lie. And the little kid, he said, no, 100%, I'm the first one. <laughs> Imagine when a society becomes convinced that this is okay, a, way, a, way, a way of life from the top down. It's very dangerous, but then gossip, talking about people behind their backs when we're not around. Body language. I always say, look at the security guy, look at the guy that fixes things for you, your gardener. We walk by them, we don't say hello to them because we are on the phone, we are busy. Right? And so therefore, do you sometimes realize that everybody you walk by that contributes to your life deserves something, a nod maybe, or a smile, a recognition to recognize them every once in a while? to be able to feel for them. Body language. We are very, very, very challenging to people who uh, do things for us and we negotiate the price up and down. A lady at Arabian Ranch has just moved in and uh, I was, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just talking to her because I was uh, doing something in that area. And uh, she's like, why is it your uh, country you have people who every time they pick up a box is 10 dirham? I said, how much you pay rent here? 250. My God, these guys, 10 dirham, what is it going to do to you? How, how many boxes do you have? 10 boxes times 10 is 100. Let them have. It's like they keep coming back, they only take one box and they come back. We start nickel and dime in the poorest of people and have an attitude towards them and negotiate with them. This is one of my biggest challenges in business. Always the, the simple people are the ones we argue with and negotiate with and squeeze the most. And then we go pay arm and a leg for something that is a brand name. So in Ramadan, you have to revisit your attitude, your body language, backbiting, ill feelings. Avoid and eliminate the seven sins in a sense, which we have in Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, and so on and so forth, Judaism. Any questions? How we do this in a way where it is, and before I go to the exempt, it's in your way. you the inventor of how you're going to deal with this. So really, if you think about it, and let's please now just open up a few questions. When I, when I stop drinking and eating, and I am disciplined, some people become angry, some people become ill. What's your role as somebody who's non-fasting? Say, come on, be patient. It's okay, it's only till 7 o'clock, you're going to be okay. Just like the kids. See, my kids want to fast. And when they say, I can't, I say, no, you can't, just try. Five years old in America, they called the social services for me. <laughs> this, is, this is child abuse. I say, oh, really? Fix him, tell him to eat. Go ahead, give him water. He refused. He had tolerance. So they start. Now eight years old, last year he was the one that fasted what? The whole Ramadan. The only one in the classroom. There are people with tolerance. There are people that are very weak. They don't have this tolerance. You have to help them. You know, my wife is pregnant or breastfeeding. As you will see, she doesn't what? Fast, right? 
She drinks coffee in the morning. What am I going to torture her because she's drinking coffee? But she doesn't have to come and do this. And this is something very important. Why can't we drink coffee at work? Drink it, but be discreet and don't come to me and go. Oh. Oh, it's sweet. It's good coffee, man. Why are you doing this? Some people don't mind it, but some people mind it. The, when we started originally zero food, gentleman walked into Dubai Mall when we first started to open a few places, bought French fries for his child on a stroller. Happened to be there, he walked out of the food court, which he shouldn't have until the fresh was fi fries were finished. I smelled the French fries. I was dying for French fries the whole day. <laughs> at break of fast, I'm standing at the drive-thru. <laughs> One large fries, please. <laughs> Where are you, honey? The dinner is ready. Iftar, come on. I'm like, I'll be there in just a minute. <laughs> Let me finish eating the fries first. It does drive people, even if you have good tolerance, good. So therefore, really, this concept of this month, not eating, not drinking, not, it's to teach us patient. No relationship with your spouse to teach us value we have, but we tend to forget. And so therefore, in an environment where everything is there for you, are you ever appreciative of it? We take it for granted. In the old days when we had no AC, now there is AC everywhere. In the old days when we had to walk, now we drive everywhere. Lots of things we have. And so therefore, when you talk about unlawful, then you have to also remember that you're not supposed to lie and gossip and have ill feelings anyway. Why are you? So for 16 or 18 hours or 14 hours, you practice, but everybody together. See, when I'm the only one who's in diet and we are out and about and we go, everybody wants to introduce me to the best dessert they've ever had. <laughs> Come on, man, just have a bite, just like shisha, you know? You sit with people just out of accommodating them who are doing shisha, you don't want to do shisha. And they say, just take a, take a hit. I don't want to. Come on, man, try it. Have you tried it? When was the last time? Have you? I don't want to, hello? <laughs> Why do you insist? And this is what we do to each other. Just like smoking cigarettes when it was allowed in aeroplanes. As a young man traveling, college back and forth to home, they always kept telling me, would you like one? So one time I took one and blew it back on the guy. He said, what are you doing? I said, that's what you're doing to me. So how does it feel now? And so the concept here of being mindful of others' feelings rather than your own. Always look at what have you done to me. Like Janet Jackson said, look, where have you, you know. No, look, what are you doing to everybody else? See, we get up every day and there is five prayers and they say, what do you do in the prayer? I say, I remember who did I do wrong? And I have to get the courage to go say sorry to them. And I remember who did me right and did me good. Of course, starting with the Lord and then wife and, you know, kids. And I go say thank you. So I encourage them to do more good. The problem in life, we tend to always think of who do this wrong. And we are going to kill them. We are going to revenge. We are going to teach them a lesson. We're going to send them a nasty email. Huh? And we remember what, what good we, did we do to others and our favors upon everybody else. And we have to remind them of the favors we've done for them. So really, it's a revamping of the human essence. And it's a practice that goes on in a daily basis. Very strong stuff. But then we always turn it into commercial, and we turn it about, oh, where are we have an iftar today? What are we cooking? And you know where it goes. Any questions? Any questions? Ramadan is not going to be where it used to be, where it should have been, where it should be now. Slowly, slowly, we are changing it. But are you part of keeping it true to its essence? Because in all other fasting, we don't even do it anymore. Because it doesn't make sense. So I hope Ramadan continues to make sense. Any questions? Children, they, they, they could if they want to, but you don't have to force them. And if the kid is fasting and he goes and sneaks in the pantry and comes back with a chocolate chip on his uh, lips, it's okay. Have fun with it. Some parents become psycho. No, you are fasting. You're not supposed to. Why did you just eat? Relax. It's a training. It's, it's not uh, forcing. Yes, ma'am. Well, throughout the, the year, you, you could. Some people fast every Monday and Thursday, like my mom, who's older, you know. Uh, some people begin, uh, they do three days if every lunar calendar month. Some people begin in this month. I personally just crash right into it. <laughs> First day I wake up, oh, there we go. It's no coffee today, yalla. 
<laughs> Try, you know what I mean? It's like when the, uh, you know, do 20 push-ups. 10, 10. No, do 20. And then you are at 11 and you're like dying, but you have to do 20. It's, you got to do what you got to do. And so it depends on the person, but whatever suits you. It's an individual relationship. It's an individual task. It's an individual training. It's only how you see it going to benefit you and how you want to give back to its concept and its principle. It has nothing to do. But we'll go back to the concept of why we do it together. So you don't come and tell me, would you like shisha? Would you like a dessert? All of us are fasting. So if you are gossiping, if you are yelling, if you are angry, Allahumma inni fasting. We say, Allahumma inni sign, I'm fasting. Even if I am the fasting when I'm doing it wrong, you remind me, you say, hello, you're fasting, hello. Don't lose your fast. Kindness. All of a sudden, the community, all. I want to have coffee, I go have it. Just like smokers now, they go outside the door and they go hide somewhere else to smoke. Sometimes they come back breathing smoke, which is, again, you know what I mean? So it's all of these things that we are now practicing, trying to see, mind others' feelings, mind others' needs. And so therefore we become, but as a team, all of us, we stop eating at the same time and we eat all at the same time. Any questions? This is, you know, I'm trying not to prolong this, but it's deep. It's very, very, very uh, deep principle of how we, the human being, can make the most out of this experience. Mentally disabled, you cannot chronically ill. Pregnant and nursing, remember the star here. Uh, menstruating women and sick for the day, traveler. So, the star, pregnant or nursing mom, one should feed a poor person for each missed day. So every year my wife did not fast, we had to go feed 30 people. Good? If you don't fast because you are breastfeeding or pregnant, at the end of Ramadan, you figure out on feeding 30 people for every day you broke your fast. Right? It's, it's a concept. I, I don't know why, but I guess it's to balance society, what's wrong with it? Poor people could use the help, but it's by force sometimes, so we do it. Because if we don't do it by force, sometimes we tend not to do it. But ministrating for whatever it is it takes you, for uh, sick for the day, oh, my stomach, I'm not feeling well, I have a headache, I can't, I can't continue to fast today. Uh, traveler, if you are traveling, huh? and uh, you should then what? One should make up the fast. It's not negotiable. Good? So now uh, all my daughters are making up the fast because, you know, when you get your cycle, you have a whole year to make up the five, six days, whatever it is. And all of a sudden, now Ramadan is here. You have to make it up before the next Ramadan arrives. Any questions? Any questions? So, system. It's not by force. It has what do you call a structure to it. Typical Ramadan day, suhoor. Before we break it down, let's start from the concept here is to wake up again as a family, get together. Wish strength, God help me. Uh, I'm going to do better today. Give me the strength to make it through the day as a family. Not again buffets and we are stayed up all night long and it's a party every time with suhoor. They call me to come and give a presentation at suhoor at 3 in the morning. Like, I'm sorry, I have better things to do at 3 in the morning. I am worshiping, I am revisiting, I'm doing yoga, you know. Another concept of yoga, but yoga. I am re-evaluating myself. So therefore, suhoor is a meal. It's not to eat a lot either, because if you eat a lot, you will end up eating, no, you'll end up being very hungry. The more you fill up the stomach, the more you're gonna want. Work, we go to work, guys. If you were pearl divers, you had to go pearl diving. I remember with my dad as a contractor, I'm working in the desert, and my mouth as a kid, you know, my dad is like, just be patient. And we just pour water on top of us. We take water and swish and I say, don't drink, don't swallow water, don't cheat, you know. Uh, it's very rough, very tough, but you do it. You do it, you try very hard. And it teaches you a lot. But we work, not go sleep and take off and it's vacation time. Nowadays, like, everybody wants to shut down during Ramadan. Who say, what's the point of it? It's the whole point is life as usual, and now you are under training. Life as usual, and now you are struggling. Now you are being disciplined. 
Not you change your lifestyle to the where you are, it's very easy and it's uh, no problem fasting because you slept all day long and woke up 30 minutes before break of fast. What is that? But again, if we don't teach the right thing, we go on doing the wrong thing. Cook. Everybody gets in the kitchen and goes shopping and look at the shopping now. All the grocery stores with the specials, right? That's a good time for you to load up on your, you know. What is this? What's going on? Why we become so fanatic about cooking? It should be the simplest thing, so we are, what? We see how light it is. You know why anorexia is addicting, anybody? Why it becomes addicting? Because the feeling of being completely empty is not bad. It's very healthy, but not for too long till it becomes detrimental because there is, you know, everything in extreme becomes what? Opposite effect. This is in everything, folks. We're not just extreme religious now, and this is where we focus. There is extreme in the way we live our lives. From the way we live, look at the buildings, look at the cars, look at the fashion we wear, look at the food we eat and the varieties. Everything. We live in an era of extremism at its best. A to Z. Everything in our life is at its extreme level. Even when we go to healthy diet, it's extreme. They deliver you a meal and you have... You go to exercise, it's extreme. Everybody wants 0% fat. What is going on? So it's not about cooking, relax. Take it easy. And breaking the fast. We sit, we eat as a family. And always when I do iftars, and I do iftars, I did with the Sheikh Mohammed Center of Culture and Understanding iftars, and I said, guys, this is not about food. And I'm doing this here because a lot of my old customers, they say, no, no, we want your talk, please. You know, so we're doing it in uh, Dira. And I say the 10 minutes before we break our fast, let's talk about the, what, what was your struggle today? You have to sit and rethink your day. You know, sometimes it's the last 10, 15 minutes and my son does something and I'm like, did I just tell you? Oh yeah, you just pushed me enough to, you know, forget, you know? Why can you be pushed? You should stop being pushed. Why are you so easily ticked off? Why are you so easily to uh, anger? Why are you, uh, all of these things, it's like such a great uh, practice of revisiting yourself till you perfect yourself. It's a very personal journey, but it's daily for 29 or 30 days. Any questions? Serious stuff? But it's really what the true essence of it. Night prayers, Sarawiyah. I know you guys with, oh my God, my driveway is blocked. Oh my God, the speaker is, how am I going to sleep? How am I going to, my kid is, you know, being awakened. Do whatever it takes to cope with it. But this is a time where uh, the mosque becomes the centerpiece of everybody's life. Lots of prayer. And people come out of the woodworks where they only pray in Ramadan. They only think of God in Ramadan. So I guess God knew best. He said, if I make this good system for everybody, then there are people who will just at least in this month come with everybody because they are ashamed or shy to. Not. So therefore they come, which is good. Some of them stay the course after Ramadan. Some of them go back to uh, their old self, which that's what we do, you know. Always after a, a healthy diet or exercise, we go back and do exactly what we were not supposed to do. This uh, thing of determination and uh, long perseverance. We don't have it unless we are trained to have it. Any questions? Yes? You know, we always hear you know, the festive month. We always hear a few adjectives about Ramadan. The holy month of Ramadan, the festive month. Yes. And so, you know, me living in Dubai, I've always known Ramadan as... It is in the evening party time, everyone's iftar and buffet and zuhur yeah. and everyone's in the Ramadan tent, so it's very festive. Are you saying that originally it shouldn't have been yeah. very commercial? And it yeah, yeah. Lebanon festive? started the, the Ramadan tent. Lebanon. I remember when everybody used to go to Lebanon in Ramadan because there is Ramadan tents. Well, really, I, I was like, you know, what's going on? They say, oh, no, they have iftar together in the tent, and then there's the oud player, and then there is the, you know. But I said, Ramadan? So, well, after iftar? I said, oh, so it's after iftar, it's okay? So, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? And this is what everybody wants, but no, we break fast as a family. Uh, thank you very much. It's good to see you. We met, maybe today we came together and we, we haven't spoken to each other for a while. So it was a very good time over iftar, over uh, supplication. Then we go to pray, which is, if you think about it, it's right after iftar. And then after that, uh, you go back and maybe you know, watch TV or a little bit, but usually again, read some Quran and then get ready to sleep so you can get up again at three in the morning. Your whole life is different. Your, her, your whole life is devout to fulfilling the system of training. So you should focus on your exercise. This is not time to... You have 11 months to enjoy life however you want, okay? 
You have 11 months to do whatever you want. God wants this 29, 30 days for you to become disciplined enough to do the system that is best for you to overcome all the things that are negative about us that goes unnoticed and to teach us to become better human beings. Remember, good conduct. Good conduct is not about, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of things, you know, when we say the music or, or any of these things. Folks, it's all about what are you doing and is it good or bad? Just reason with it yourself. You yourself, you listen to music with bad lyrics, what are you doing? You're listening to, you're watching a video music with, you know how these days very explicit and degrading to women, the way I look at it. Why? So therefore, you have to be careful is, uh, in this month, and I'm not allowed to see this, then why do I watch it, why do I do it, why do I say it, why do I eat it after Ramadan? Then you start to train yourself. So yes, it became a little bit overdone. Nobody saying not to have fun and enjoy and maybe go to a shopping spree or whatever, but come on, you know? We are shopping now, why do we have to shop in Ramadan too? Just like, you know, how we, well, look what happened to Christmas, folks. It's a burden, it's a responsibility, it's a torture, it's uh, and then, you know, the day who get me this, oh, you bought me something from Walmart? Thanks a lot. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with Walmart? At least I thought of you. It's like, yeah, but we don't buy gifts to each other from Walmart. So where did you buy me my, uh, mine from? Dillard's or, uh, you know, Macy's? What? I it, it's, we, cha we change what's supposed to be good to something that becomes absolutely negative and the opposite. So Ramadan traditions, uh, visiting family and friends, this is something you could do, especially in the weekend when the tomorrow is off. Uh, and the reason here is to connect with people who you haven't connected with, especially, you know, families that are disconnected. Uh, feeding the poor. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if Khalij Times will put it out, but I wrote an article for Khalij Times, and there is one for uh, J.W. Marquis Marriott. Uh, can you please just join this year? Wherever you live, there is a mosque, and they might have iftar right outside. Wherever you live, there is somewhere in the neighborhood a Ramadan tent. Take the kids, huh? Maybe he's a little bit young, you know. But take the kids, take a box of oranges, a box of you know, juices, and just go there and let your kids actually, this is the beauty of it, let them distribute to the poor people. And just watch, take uh, selfies, take pictures. I don't know, we'll see, I'm working on it, but I could use help. It's called Ramadan Changed Me. Hashtag, I'm trying to do an Instagram where this year everybody go and with, when you did something different in this Ramadan, upload it to Ramadan Changed Me. Yeah, because uh, we don't card the people who come to eat, these people, really this meal is, uh, you know, save them nine dirham or ten dirham, but also at the same time, uh, uh, they come together, they like it, they enjoy it themselves, and we don't card if you are Muslim or non-Muslims. And mostly it's uh, the people who are uh, not fasting, they enjoy it, they love it, because they are now, they feel equal, they are treated the same as these people from this country, or the same as these people who are Muslim race. You know, in a, ma in a majority Muslim country, it's very hard. By the way, it is majority Muslims. You know, I know you think we have lots of expats, but uh, technically speaking, 70, 68% is Muslims in Dubai, or UAE, good? And so therefore, uh, you feel like you are treated just like everyone, it's nice. It's very important. Any questions? You have a question? Yeah? So if I understand correctly, at the, when it's iftar, the breaking of the fast, I can go to the mosque and sit on the person. If there is iftar there, just watch it the day before or drive by and see if they are preparing for an iftar. Or you ask if they will roll mats. You will see lots of people at 5.30, 6.30, because it's 70 days almost. So they will be gathered and you'll see them, you know, coming in from the labor camps or their work. And uh, sometimes it's 150, 50 people, sometimes it's 500 people. So at that time it's up to you how much you can take. But if you take and you take and you take, <coughs> they will have enough. They already have usually, but if they had more, it's not going to hurt because they could use it and they will always utilize it the next day or for the suhoor meal. Yes, please, anything. Don't cook rice. If you want to buy meals or whatever, this is too much commercial. Just go to the people who are in charge and find out the correct person and say, I want to pay part of the iftar tonight or whatever. Wallahi, this is, the, this is some of the stuff I teach when I do my presentation about, uh, let's say, mosque. I say you just know, you need to know the, what we call it, the, the etiquette. 
The etiquette to enter into a mosque is to look like Mother Teresa. Only the face and the hands are showing from head to toe, just like I am now. No, everybody thinks it's uh, Islamic religion. It's all the religion, modesty. Nobody's better than anybody. We're not comparing what brand you are wearing or what size body parts you have. You walk in, you same as everybody. No purses, no distraction, no phones. Put it on silent if you have it. And so therefore, you took your shoes off and you walked in, completely covered except your face and hand. Nobody will come and ask you, green eyes. You're not a real Muslim, are you? <laughs> are you a real Muslim? Well, I just started. Oh, okay. It's nobody's business. Yeah, nobody will card you. Yes, ma'am. Well, your Muslim friends, do you take non-Muslim or other, do you take them with you to the mosque? Have you taken anybody? No, actually. But hmm? there is a section for women. Yeah. Anybody would like to join me, okay, you know, we can gather and go. Good. So Yalla, start an initiative. Why not? Are you a teacher here? No, I'm a parent? a mom here. Yeah, mom. You live in Barsha? Hey, not bad, you know, you, you, you can meet them at one of the mosques where, uh, go check first, make sure it's a nice ladies section, you know, because <laughs> sometimes the ladies section is just a room because I don't know who decides that, but may God I'll help us, you know, but uh, so most of the mosques now that we build now, no, we said we're, we're a second time out, they have to be equally as nice. So when Sheikh Mohammed himself, his highness started to do the bottom floor for the men and second floor for the men, almost half of the space, and you can overlook and see. So it's equal view, equal uh, beauty, equal everything. So check one of these. Have you taken anybody with you to the mosque? Yeah? Yeah. See, this is the problem is us. No, seriously, guys. No, the problem is us. You are in this country, we live in this country as Muslims or as Emirati, we do nothing about it to say, come to my house, come with me to the mosque, to just show you. The problem sometimes we don't know how to answer the questions. I agree with that and that, you know, is the biggest because you ask all kinds of questions. So what can I do? Should I do this? No, is this okay? And then the person all of a sudden is like embarrassed because they don't know how to answer the question. Then it becomes a little bit, you know. But yes, uh, I'll be more than happy to help by emails or whatever. Or if you read some of my Open Minds articles that I had about can I enter into a mosque. I, I learned this actually in uh, Christianity when I went to go to a church with my friend. I said, oh, it looks beautiful. Can we take a picture? And he said, but... Um, I cannot go in. I said, why? He said, this is a Catholic church. I said, so? He said, I am Methodist. I said, I don't know what you're talking about, but can we just go there, take a few pictures, man? He said, no, no, you go in. I'm not, uh, it's okay. I'll wait for you outside. I said, why? Do you have Methodist written here? How do you spell that? Why can't you go inside? I'm a Muslim. What are they going to do to me? What? They're going to ask me if I'm a Muslim inside? So there is this... Uh, Nonsense as civilized, intelligent, well-educated people. Why are we doing this? So I'm saying to you today that if you want, learn the etiquette. Once you have learned the etiquette, you can go in and as she said, there is ladies' prayer room. Go in without looking, you know, like uh, you are worried, you are nervous, that if somebody's going to come and talk to you, just, you know, but make sure you are 100%. Any questions? Yes. <clears throat> Just because I don't want to miss this point. I'm interested in getting my kids more involved. Yes. And especially the, the spirit of giving and the community service. There's not a lot of opportunities. Many times we do things for other countries, but I want them to get more involved here. And I said to them, Ramadan's a perfect time to start. What do you think besides feeding the poor, let's say, you know, the, the suggestion just do, what are other ways that they can also get involved in? Well, there is a community, uh, let's say like uh, Dubai Cares is doing books for Syria. This is something you can join. I don't know if they still have room. They might have closed the, uh, the what do you call it, volunteer. Uh, but you can go there, and then people don't show up, because that's what happens, and you can join. Uh, Red Crescent, it's like the Red Cross. Uh, they have also sometimes program. Uh, do, yeah, yeah. Um, the problem we lack, again, as a society, as Muslim, to create a program that to involve kids, this is something that is not necessarily done correctly, unfortunately. 
because um, there are people who think that kids shouldn't fast wait till they reach puberty and then they you know they decide which is fine but most most kids want to emulate their mom and dad they feel left out when everybody's fasting and everybody's you know oh we made it all today and then they are out so believe me like in my family they start young one 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 daughter she did not want to start even when she reached puberty, she said, I don't like fasting. This year, she's 20 plus years, and she's like, I don't know about fasting this Ramadan. I said, it's not negotiable. <laughs> you, uh, you're saying it to me, so I can tell you, yeah, you should, uh, because it's not, you know, fasting is one of the five acts of worship. So for kids, uh, can they make programs, like in the school here, and get together? Uh, can they go uh, do a project of, uh, of any good? Um, Yeah. Especially the gardeners and the pool workers. Yeah. People who need leftovers, please don't throw leftovers away. Please buy those aluminum containers you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Always, uh, you can buy them by the box, you know, wholesale. And leave them in the house. Every time you have a meal, after you finish, you're not going to eat the leftovers. Put it in the container, seal it, put it in a bag. On your way out, to the garden, to the security. Don't worry, even if all of you in the same neighborhood, in the same subdivision, gave the security guy your leftover food, he will have so many people that he can call that they will come. This is what I started as a tradition in Sheikh Mohammed Center, is that, you know, we serve so much food. As I started to feed the whole entire Bar Dubai area. And it became a famous place that, you know, and if one day we didn't have a meal, they will get mad at me. It's like, where is the, where is the food? So come tomorrow. So it is important, uh, hotels, they are very, very, very worried. But as a Westerner, they'll trust you better than us. See, this is again ironic. Go to the hotel and say, listen, I would love to. I am in a non-profit organization or I'm in a non-profit good group. We, um, we would love to come and collect the food you're going to throw away. Just put it in a container, put it in a cooler for me. I'll give you the stuff and I'll take it. I will not tell anybody where it came from. At a hotel show two years ago, I said, please stop. They said, well, it's legal or whatever, and it's going to, uh, you know, I said, yeah, it's going to lower the value of your uh, buffet that now somebody, I'm not going to come and get the food. I'm going to come to the buffet. I'm going to come to the buffet. I, I'm not going to come behind the hotel in the back uh, exit and get whatever was left over. What's your, but it's all about the initiative <laughs> to make a move that nobody has done before you and you become a doer for good that people emulate and follow. The problem doing good is very hard for us. We're scared. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. I'm just wondering, so from the outside, so from the mosque, we'll hear the 3 a.m. prayer, and yes. then we'll hear two more prayers in the middle. So it's five what? prayers a day. The, the crack of dawn prayer nowadays, it's at, uh, uh, you could say, um, 440. Uh, uh, so um, you will hear not a call to the prayer, but the people will begin to wake up or if they're still awake to eat. So some mosques do what we call a call to say, start your uh, suhoor. Uh, and some people will say a uh, call to the prayer to say, uh, break, stop you know, from eating. And then the call to the prayer. And then there is what we call to rise and line up next to each other. So. This is at crack of dawn. I don't know what's going to happen in your mosque. But in Dubai, legally and the system, is the call to the prayer. Then there is another call which everybody lines up next to each other and it's time to start the prayer. That's crack of dawn. Then noon, huh? and then mid-afternoon. So the noon one is 12.20. The mid-afternoon is about 4 o'clock, 3.45. And in the sunset, which is 7 o'clock, almost 6.59 now for uh, sunset. And then the complete dark, which is 8.30. Good. Any question? Anything you could think of? All I'm saying is look around, revisit your position, and find a way to do something that you are content with, that you're happy, and you're happy with the contribution. For us as Muslims, please take an initiative with the people who are closest to you. Don't try to make something bigger than life. Those who are closest to you as parents, as teachers in the school, you could do something with them, like a mosque when we pray taraweeh, you know? Like one of the things that you'll see here, uh, I will say that uh, I will get to it. Oh, taraweeh and qiyam. Uh, people, we don't close the mosque in Ramadan, 24-7. 
So people will stay there, read Quran, they will stay praying. So you could just walk in and see how everybody, and line up next to everybody. Nobody will know what you say, and you could say, pray to God however you want to pray. Don't pray, just talk to yourself. What, what is yoga? We make it into a sport, but it's religion. It's about, you talk to yourself, and you rethink your position on lots of issues. It's very good, healthy, mentally healthy, and physically healthy. Questions? Any questions? Ramadan tents, again, you know, um, this is uh, now what's happening, but there are tents uh, for just uh, entertainment. Yeah? Any questions? Actually, I have a question. If we're to invite and have a dinner party or something during Ramadan, and different faiths are coming, one would be, you know, if you didn't want to do an iftar because people are breaking their fast, would, it, would you just not do something during Ramadan or would you invite people at, I don't know, eight Like you invite me as a fasting Muslim to come to you for dinner? Yes, but it's not going to be at. Would it be an iftar? It would have to be. It's better. Because I'm starving. What are you going to keep me waiting till 7.30? <laughs> I'll die. Because <laughs> people say, no, let's do it later for suhoor. And I thought suhoor is, like you said, in the morning. So no, it's three, 3 in the morning. Yeah, because then they eat. Then whatever you cook, nobody's going to eat much of it. No, because they're trying to have that atmosphere of iftar. They are afraid to come to your house, and then it's not atmosphere, iftar atmosphere. This is... Um, so because you have misconception about us, we have misconception about you in our, you know. Uh, so it's like if I come to your house and there is a bar, you know what I mean? And the dinner table is right next to it. I'm having iftar and there is the selection of wine. And, or maybe you are somebody who is my right, your right. You do your thing, I do my thing. All of a sudden you pour a glass of wine for yourself sitting next to me. And an iftar? <laughs> yeah, I, please. Doesn't go. Even if you are somebody who drinks. Ramadan, everybody's good. <laughs> Everybody changes their naughtiness and whatever it is that they, they think it's, uh, it's okay to do outside Ramadan, they don't do it. So therefore, if you invite me for Ramadan, tell me, look, I, I understand it's 100% uh, protocol, etiquette. I promise you it will be just fine. I'm inviting you actually and this friend and this friend. I'm, I just would love to have a gathering at my house with a... Uh, my you know, close friends. Start with your close friends in practice and let them tell you the truth. What did they see? Sometimes people are, if there is a picture that it's inappropriate, you know, art we call it, but it's inappropriate sometimes. Sometimes statues, you know what I mean? Or saint. Lots of things become a, an issue with certain Muslims, unfortunately, you know, but it is what it is. It takes time for you to learn that, you know, uh, I cannot, you know, uh, be against all these things. This is their life and I'm here to just like here in Dubai for us to bring everybody, whatever you want you could have, that's fine. Because it's always been like that, guys. Even when Moses, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, left. I said there is always, there used to be people who didn't worship, including the uncle and the grandfather of Muhammad, peace be upon him, they did not accept the faith. Now in 950 years he called for people to worship God, his son and his wife did not accept. These are stories written in the Bible, written in the you know, Quran. Nobody, oh, these days we are so against that when somebody does not believe. So therefore, you came here and you live your life as is. But now we want to connect together, we have to come halfway. So therefore, you know, like I just read about in America, a mosque did not get built uh, in time for them to start praying in it for Ramadan this last year. Uh, the church in the neighborhood gave them the church for them to pray Ramadan in it. Yeah. We break away from this nonsense because if you go to Andalusia, Garnata, Cordoba, Hamra, you'll find the same house of worship is for Jews, for Muslims, for Christians. Muslims worship too much five times a day, seven days a week, but Christians come to it once a week and Jews come to it once a week. So what do you do with the building? It's a community center. Yeah, you don't waste it just for five times a day prayer or once a week prayer. Yeah. But we're not talking about it. Questions? So we'll talk now about the etiquette and this will be no eating, drinking, shouting, wearing, revealing. This is just the concept of accommodating those who are around you. It depends on their personalities. They could be very tolerant, very accepting. They could be very, very, very like, no, this is not right. Why are you doing this? Why you smell? Why you have too much perfume? Let's say like if you are a lady and you have a lot of perfume, it's good perfume, and you walk by men and you awaken their that's what the lady's perfume does, right? Huh? 
The other day, uh, I can smell uh, my wife, my daughter, but my wife cannot smell her. I said, what is this, some secret perfume? I can smell it, but you cannot smell it? <coughs> yeah. So, so again, uh, little things such as, um, <coughs> uh, let's say, like eating and drinking in front of the people, like we said before. Good? So really, I personally think that you should be able to mind the person who closest to you or the people who are around you, whether it's work or wherever it is. And so therefore, you accommodate them. And that's called minding others, rather than others have to mind you. So it's not like you're not allowed. In private, you can do whatever you want. In public, it's rated G and it's suitable for everybody. Keep a modest demeanor and good attitude. So therefore, don't provoke anger, don't provoke uh, gossip, don't, don't create a situation where it might lead to bad conduct. You could be contributing to it, or you could contribute to it. Because I could start gossip, and then also then you contribute, and then also then, you know? So therefore, it's very important to uh, do the best we can from avoiding all the unlawful, or uh, unlawful particularly. Be understanding, tolerant, and patient. There are people who fast, but their demeanor, their conduct is not fasting people. I'm sorry <coughs> on their behalf. I don't know why. But it's very unfortunate, I don't know, but they fast and then they want us to pay a heavy price for it. It's very unfortunate. It could be your husband, it could be your wife, it could be your kids, it could be your colleague at work, unfortunately. So therefore, you know what does that do? Teach me to be more tolerant. Teach me to be more patient. Yeah, because those are the ones that you are going to just blow a fuse and say, why are you fasting and doing this? But then instead you say to them, thank you very much, I am fasting. Yes? Another question? Sure, um, sure, keep it coming. I remember in the workplace, um, again, we were always very, you know, we set Ramadan guidelines, uh, especially those who are new to the country, and regarding coffee, you know, be modest and discreet. And I remember um, one of my friends who came and she was fasting, and she said, uh, I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just finishing my coffee. And she said, no, no, that's fine, because if you're drinking coffee in front of me, I get more points or something. She said, oh, it's okay because I'll... What's that? I, I, I oh, if I struggle more. This is nonsense. There we go, misconception. That if you are eating, like the mother when she's cooking for her kids, she gets more points because she's cooking and she is now seeing the food and she is abstaining from the food. So that's more rewarding than not seeing the food. See, we make up stuff. This is what's amazing about us. You know, when we read the manual from uh, Apple, Whatever it tells us how to use the iPhone, we follow strictly to the T. But when it comes to God's orders and God's... We, we try to modify as if he doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't know what we should be doing right. So one guy, when the Prophet peace be upon him was still alive, thank God this happened, he went to fast, so he, therefore he went and sat under a tree in the sun. A little bit of shade, a little bit of sun. So Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him saw him, and I guess it was meant to be. He said, what is he doing? They said, oh, he's uh, going to stay out there in the heat so he can get more reward for his fasting. He said, go tell him to break his fast. We don't need it. God doesn't need it. He's not here to torture you. He's not here to make you. He, he's here to train you, to, to give you a good, nice, what we call it, way of becoming a better human being. Not to torture yourself and get more reward for torturing yourself. Yeah. So... Again, misconceptions, you know, and it sometimes it keeps going, it keeps going without being corrected, and it becomes a big, huge mess. Uh, be mindful of others' uh, needs and shortcomings. We talked about it. Uh, yes, join an iftar. Please, 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 if your Muslim friend does not invite you for iftar, just be bold. Say, can I come to an iftar? <laughs> I just want to see a real one. Please. Oh, you don't have <laughs> Not every night. <laughs> yeah, right. Honestly, anybody who would like to join us. But uh, what's your name? Rola. Rola. Rola, if you get with all the Muslim parents and say, guys, can we do something totally different at the SA, right? ASD. Uh, ASD. Yeah? American. I, uh, yeah? Can we? Can we this year, every family, get at least one or two families from the kids in our classrooms? You know how we do birthdays? Why birthdays are okay, we invite everybody, and my child has to go to 30 birthdays, <laughs> but nobody does iftars. They're just the same, but it's the family instead. So again, yes, we should. 
uh, please join iftars. Join, join the poor people who are at the mosque or at the tent. Sit with them. See, ladies, if you see all men, I know it's hard for you to do that because, you know, they'll be like, what are you doing here? Because it's mostly liberals and I'm the all men. So just give the goods and whatever. So thank you guys. Take a picture and leave. But if your husband or your boys or, you know, your uh, little daughters want to join, that's fine. Right? Yes. As a woman, not for her. No, 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 no. Because I was at um, like Fox Park and I couldn't get the parking thing to work. And this guy came out of his car. I'm like, can you get this thing working? Like, what do you do? It won't work for me. Uh, no, no like, problem. What, what, what we should just, just an etiquette, and it's like a million dollar question, is a proximity and touching. Right. That's the only thing. <laughs> do you like a strange man to get too close to you? It depends how cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never know. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I always tell the ladies I have a Ferrari outside. Is that okay with you? Uh, but ladies don't like a strange man being too friendly. And so therefore the concept here is a proximity and touching. But talking, eye to eye contact is very important. The misconceptions is that the people don't shake hands, whatever, this is just another story, but it became that uh, we're not supposed to touch. But shaking hands, kings always shake hands, even including King Solomon, uh, King Solomon, he just shook Donald Trump's wife, hands. I was waiting for the moment to see if we have, are we going somewhere with this? So therefore the problem with us is we create gossip, and then gossip becomes fact, when nobody checked the fact, or nobody validated. So for you, as long as you say, excuse me, sir, could you please help me with do this? Fine, no problem. Eye to eye contact. Good? Any questions? We, 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 lots of things we could do in training, because what I do, culture is very vast, and there is a lot of things, like the, the concept of uh, social etiquette, I call it. Uh, business etiquette, uh, neighborly etiquette, lots of things we could talk about. Any questions? So yes, Iftar, try fasting, why not? I know you during Friday, Thursday night prepare yourself, you know, wake up for suhoor or whatever, and get up Friday morning, and you know, you don't eat and drink and have coffee that day. See how it feels. Everybody's like, oh my God, I will not be able to make it. Yes, you will make it. Teach yourself patience, discipline. What's wrong with it? You are, you, you're not going to become a Muslim if you fast for one day or two days? My God, it's okay to be gay, it's okay to be lesbians, but nobody wants to touch Muslim with 10 foot pole. Why? What's wrong with it? Everybody's afraid to marry a Muslim. Like people disown their kids when they say, I have a Muslim uh, potential. Why? What's wrong? So it's a concept where we have been driven and we are allowing it to take us there. Should stop it quickly. And please, um, fast and see what it's like. What is it that you are uh, struggling with? What did you that day struggle with the most? And reflect. Say, oh my God, how many times did I stop myself from getting angry? Oh my God, how many times did I stop myself from saying something about somebody? It's called backstabbing. Oy, 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 oy. You'll be surprised. It's automatic for us. We don't realize it. But you become conscientious in Ramadan and start catching yourself, catching yourself. And if we do it as a family, then we help each other out. Because sometimes you don't see how many times you fight with your husband, ladies, and he's accusing you of something he just did. That's what we do, human beings. We see your fault, but we don't see ours. So in Ramadan, we see each other and we help each other do our best. Feed the poor, do netto, and volunteer. <coughs> we talked about that. Ramadan myths and contradiction. No drinking water can affect your health. It's not true. You could do that. Drink enough before. But that does not mean you drink till you blow up because there is no such a thing as you will drink enough that will be survived. No, the body is capable and able to, uh, in a much, much harsher days. Uh, I remember in the desert, I was with my dad, and as you know, like I said, as a contractor, and I'm helping him out. And uh, you know, I was the kind of guy that went and got his own job, so therefore I was working already my own job. And then I came uh, to my dad uh, in the afternoon, and he said, Listen, I really need you with this job, and I know you can do better because I fought with my dad, he doesn't pay me enough, and you know, and he wants to teach me a lesson, so therefore. 
And he said, please come with me. And I remember it was very, 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 very tough time. Till the uh, call to the prayer, I was so, like I used to, like I'm going to pass out. And I looked at him. I said, you know what? Next time Ramadan is in the summer, I will not be in the desert. I will never live in the desert. Look, I'm back again. I don't know what happened, but I guess I wasn't sincere when I said that. So the concept here is it was very tough for a child, and I remember, but you can make it. You can. It's okay. Driving while fasting can be dangerous. If it is dangerous for you, don't drive. If it is dangerous for you, don't endanger other people and become criminal because uh, you know, negligence, and it's not in Islam, there is no such a thing as negligence. There is guilty or not guilty. You did wrong or right. You got in the car when you weren't supposed to, that's already a responsibility. So therefore here for us, driving drunk is not an accident, it's a crime. Yeah, because whatever you do while you're drunk is your responsibility. Being drunk does not mean you get a free uh, ride. Fasting imposes on those who are not fasting. That's the fasting person in front of you who's not being nice to you. Tell them to chill. Tell them, you're supposed to relax with me and tell, you're supposed to teach me that fasting is a good thing and that you are a good person in Ramadan. Now, what are you, trying to uh, abuse me? Because that happens sometimes. You get abused by somebody who's fasting just because they are fasting. Either to and all kinds. Uh, very extravagant food displays. Let's stop it. If you contribute to it, then what are you talking about? Stop it. One entree, one soup, dessert, yes, okay, khalas. Why three, four entrees, buffets? I mean, last year, maybe I went one to two or two buffets. Uh, I tried my best to avoid as much as I could. Uh, people think that you are cheap or that you're not trying, especially the kids. Uh, wasting food, don't waste it. Bag it as soon as you finish. Put it in a can, uh, in a container, and give it to anybody you come across. Anybody. There's lots of people around us. Everywhere you go, there is a security guard or there is a labor camp nearby. Uh, staying up all night, uh, sleeping all day. You know that there is the labor camps here. You guys have them in Al Khos, not too far from here. Uh, right? Or you go there, you can drop it anywhere you want, and they will. Pick it. Or leave it at the mosque, they will distribute it. Uh, staying up all night, sleeping all day. No, well, well, what did you do? How did you train? Uh, Eid festivities. We sight the moon, and now it's time for Eid. Any questions? So at the end of the month, this is something, by the way, you always say, oh, why do you guys have to sight the moon? We already have it all calculated. What if the people don't have TV? What if they don't have electricity? What if they don't have? What if we go to an era where there is, when God revealed this in 610, by 633, 23 years of revelation, huh? uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, left and he said, that's it, you have the final update, till the end of time. Tell others, pass it on, still being passed on, but it gets tweaked. And so technically speaking, sighting the moon is a must, it's not negotiable. Good? Drink at break of dawn, no more fasting. Aha. Uh -huh. That day, at break of dawn, when you hear Allahu Akbar, for, you have to drink water. Don't fast one second after that call to the prayer. Because it's again discipline system. People start thinking, oh, I'm going to fast me a couple of hours. Nope. Oh, I'm going to make up my fasting days since I'm just going to continue on the same rhythm. Nope. Sorry. No making up fast that day of Eid. Not allowed. You have to break your fast that day. Uh, get ready to uh, pray Eid prayer. Everybody, we wear our new clothes and we go. So the kids, are, uh, you, do you have, what is the closest Eid Musalla near you here? Have you ever seen them? Tayyip, this Eid, get up in the morning and just go drive, see. It's a scene, guys. Wallah, it's an amazing scene. You know, the one in, in, next to Nadil Hamar last year, uh, you know where Nadil Hamar is? So you guys live on the other side of town. So, um, you know, uh, it ended up being uh, so... Um, busy that the cars will just park on the highway in the street and will run and the ladies with the abaya they are carrying and you know it's nice clothes and good stuff and so therefore there is the median there's the concrete how are you gonna the men we you know how are the women gonna do it so some nice people they thought of the concept and they made wooden steps for everybody so there was like every once in a while you'll see and we are crossing the street you'll see that some crazy like uncivilized people 
That's if you want to look at it that way. On the other way, it's like, wow, what a powerful gathering of all humanity, rich or poor. You park the Bentley and you run. You park the labor bus camp and you come. The Bentley driver and the bus laborer, you know, the labor camp, and everybody standing next to each other. Wow, this is the, this is the beauty that sometimes we, not like in slowly, slowly, I, I'm in the church, you know how we say, where the contributors sit in the first row and then the non-contributors face. What is this? We are all still believe in the same thing. We are all equal. Any questions? So really, how, again, the more you observe, the more you let yourself. And if you walk in that day with us, how, how is somebody going to know you're not a Muslim? I know the prayer, the lecture is going to be in Arabic. Good luck. But there's a lot of people who don't understand the lecture also anyway. They don't speak Arabic, unfortunately. <coughs> Uh, Eid prayer can be at a mosque or Eid Musalla, check them out, or open your window that morning and look outside the, uh, where the mosque is. Uh, mosque is. Uh, every head of household, this is something important, must pay the zakat al-fitr. This is not the 2.5% of your access wealth that happens once a year. This is that morning before sunrise. Before sunrise, before the prayer takes place, you should have. So we start, of course, right a few days before. But you should imagine we live in a village, folks. Imagine just living in a village all days. All the rich people take out and go give the poor people that morning. So therefore, everybody has food to eat. So I'm a family of five kids, wife and I, seven. Uh, my mom, I take care of her. That's eight. I feed eight people that morning. Even if you are pregnant and it's two days old inside your tummy, that's counted as a family member. So you have equal, so imagine half a billion people who are accepting this faith have to feed half a billion people that morning. That's good. You, you will almost eradicate hunger that morning. It's a concept. It's all about training. <coughs> Visiting idea. Visiting, we visit. We start with the grandparents, parents. We start with the relatives, brothers, sisters. Older, younger, 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 younger. Then the neighbors and the distant ones. So it starts from the oldest to the furthest. Uh, idea, we give the kids. We don't buy gifts, but now it's changing. Unfortunately, Haruna, you buy gifts? It's better. It's less pressure. Let them be free. Why do we have to go pick the gift? My wife is changing, she wants to buy the gift. I said, no, idea, it's cash, خلاص, stick to cash, okay? We just give 100 dirham, 10 dirham, even <coughs> in, in most mosques, with a lot of uh, older generation, they will have a bunch of tens, you know, or fives. And they'll just, all the kids, they just give. You could do that if you want to. Then your neighbor might start talking to you. <laughs> I don't know. This is the problem, we're gonna create something to break ice. So come up with an idea. Uh, that morning, bake a dessert, or also with iftars. In lots of articles I've said, you don't cook me a meal, but you bring me a dessert from your home. Don't go buy it from uh, a good, nice dessert place here. Please, don't impress me. Because then it becomes an obligation. I have to re-impress you or over. It's like playing cards, you know? I have to, you know, be the... So no, make me something that is very modest, very simple, it's homegrown, your, your, your culture. And write me a, a note if you're not going to be able to talk to me. This comes from my mom's recipe. I am from Hungary. And, you know, we, the other day somebody uh, invited me for a goulash. I said, oh, it's saluna. It's a stew. It's like, yeah, but we call it goulash. So you are eating goulash. I said, good goulash, no problem, you know. Um, again, three days of celebration. Three days of we did it. And we congratulate each other. Thank you so much for helping me. I love you in Ramadan. You did good. Come on, stay that way, please. That's the kind of congratulating one another. Yes, ma'am. Do you find that you grow at the end of the fasting yeah. and celebrating? Do you reflect when you say, I became a better person? Yeah, yeah, you, uh, you reflect every day. Before I do the iftar with my guests usually, I say, okay, each person tell me what, this, what, what is the one thing you've overcome today? What is the one thing? And always, always anger is number one on everybody's list. Number two, patience. You lost your patience and you became impatient and you, you know, uh, ended up doing or hurrying or rushing uh, something. Uh, but yes, but at the end of the month, what did you do that 
for a good bit of time uh, you were able to accomplish. Like a lot of times you prayed the five times a day. A lot of times you prayed them on time. I prayed all of them each day in the mosque. This is something, oh, I finished the Quran this year. Yeah, my mom, the older she got, the harder it is for her to read the whole Quran. So got to keep pushing her, got to keep, keep her helping her. Come on, one more page today, you have to. And the Quran is a manual. If, again, ladies, if you read it and it's in your house, you're not going to become a Muslim. Rather than the Daesh people tell you what Islam is, and rather than listening to Fox News or CNN, it's there, it's sold all over the place, and it's only one. There is no version 1.1, there is no version 1.2. It's only 1.0. Oh. And this is the beauty of it, it's still preserved. And so therefore we can, you know, uh, contribute again in a civilized manner rather than being told and there is these barriers that don't make nothing but war and differences and uh, uh, negativity between us, unfortunately. Questions? What time is it? Did I do okay? Yeah? Come on, guys. Okay, I think a lot of people ask questions along the way. Yeah, um, so I... I Uh, Any time, look, uh, the, the Ramadan definition, rules, guidelines, there are some good sites where they'll give you details of the do's and the don'ts. This is, now, this is for the people how to know about each other, but how to fast, what is Ramadan? How to fast Ramadan correctly? What are the misconceptions for, uh, for a person who is fasting Ramadan? Uh, scholarly sites, there is. I mean, if you email me, uh, you have my uh, contact, I will send you a good, nice, where it is not, you know, you know, because there's so much information, you don't know what's right, what's wrong these days. Yeah, but yeah, so therefore, and your education is important, why, folks? Just like how I know about Christianity, the concept of God, it's not God, it's Eloh, Yahweh, Yoha. Uh, the concept of uh, that, you know, as a Catholic, uh, uh, church, we cannot go into it because we are Methodist. I, I taught and I helped, and I, I, the churches in uh, Jabal Ali, they love the missionaries, they come, they like to, because you bring about the truth that sometimes is forgotten because of, uh, you know, how things just become diluted and you just read the last thing. And so therefore, for you to know about Islam and Muslims, and you live with them, when you know what's right, nobody can convince you what's wrong. So you're not easily convinced and driven by the mad nonsense out there. Even if a Muslim lady said it, even if Rola told you, nope, you're going to go to hell. Huh? Is she going to go to hell? She's not covering. Come on, talk to me, Rola. She's not covering. Look, she's crossing her legs, looking at me. I, how old are you? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? She's going to go to hell. Come on, I'm asking you a question. <clears throat> Answer yes or no. <laughs> yes or no? Is she going to go to hell? Yes or no? Well, each, you know, I don't, you know, it is up to the person what he's doing. Oh, she's a difficult person. Just a second. <laughs> Are you going to go to heaven? I don't know either. Aha, uh -huh. so, so... It is up to the person and how much he believes if he do good things or bad things. Are you guaranteed heaven the way you are, like this? No, maybe not. Maybe so this. So is she guaranteed hell? Nobody is guaranteed hell or... Aha. Uh -huh. Guys, nobody is the judge. Remember earlier, the first verse I showed you? He is the only judge, and it's all about conduct. So technically speaking, the problem is we judge. You cover and you think the one that don't cover something wrong with them. You don't cover and you think the one that covers something wrong with them. Why? What have happened to us? Why are we so judgmental? Why are we so quick to judge? So therefore, to read about the true Ramadan is what's right, what's wrong. And at least the information is still there. True Islam, people say Daesh, Taliban. I say, yeah, they don't represent Islam. This is like when the KKK or the Nazis, or they don't represent Christianity, they don't represent. So therefore, the fact of the matter, being educated, the problem is we are able to teach ourselves to go to Mars, to the moon, but we are not willing to learn about faith or religion. We want to know the answer in five minutes. So we look into it. What's wrong? Is our impatience towards the subject matter that we think so negatively about when it's so beautiful. If you, I, I enjoy learning about God, the more I learn about Him, the more. 
I uh, see the genius in Lordship, because without it, and all his creations, I'm a businessman, always they used to tell me, the gala dinner, the millionaires and billionaires I hang around with, I said, how come you're religious? I said, I'm not religious, I just know about religion. I said, but you know a lot, I mean, you can, you know, you could answer questions. I said, why when we become successful, خلاص, that's it, we have to walk away from faith? We have nothing to do with religion? Yeah, usually that's the way it is. We are too intelligent to mess with nonsense. Actually, it makes you more intelligent. Just my personal opinion, check it out. Can I do an uh, Instagram story, guys? <laughs> Come on, so any questions? Come on. It's, it's a pleasure to have you. It's nice because, you know, for us, parents, teachers, uh, community, uh, we need to really uh, remember that uh, uh, change starts with you. Change starts with you. So as uh, parents, uh, you will be challenged because as soon as you do something uh, and you pro Muslims and you pro whatever and Rula invites you and you go tell your husband and he goes we're not going to go to a Muslim iftar do you know what these people do we're not going to what the and your child is like oh now we're going to go to a Muslim people iftar especially if you've been talking to them negatively or something you know how it is kids say oh you black you know what I mean or sometimes our kids they say oh I'm an Emirati so what you know so the, all of a sudden the stuff but if you open it and allow it to loosen up and slowly, slowly it becomes something that is acceptable and you have the ability to connect with each other without offense, without uh, disrespect, uh, you will build something that is forever lasting and you can pass it on to generations to come. Tolerance, acceptance, you know? Yes, ma'am? To the to children, yeah, 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 yeah. We, look, the way we look at it, I, I remember when I first started this concept of teaching, and I realized that even from kindergarten, you could send them with a message, and so therefore, for me, I never say no. Uh, from kindergarten, if there is a program, there is programs we have, and. Uh, uh, all the way to politicians and presidents of countries to speak to about what's best for us to come together as a human race. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. The PTSA of the American School of Dubai. Thank, Thank you. you for what I think everyone's going to agree it was a very entertaining, very informative. Thank speech. you. Really Thank enjoyed you. Talk. Thank you for the invite. Thank really you. Enjoyed. I just wanted to say, everyone, thank you for coming. This wraps up our speaker series for parents events for the year. And again, the, the mission of our speaker series for parents is to promote um, topics that are relevant for us. And we thought it's very timely that we have um, uh, the Arab culturalist, Mr. Nasif, with us right before Ramadan. So I really wanted to thank him. Thank you all for coming. And also, I wanted to thank Rola. Oh, he's been picking on her a little bit, but Rola is new to ASD. And she has provided for us these lovely Ramadan treats. And she wrote to me and said, I really want to uh, share some Good. Ramadan treats with everyone. And that's really nice. It's part of Sorry for putting you in the spot, Rola. <laughs> Just have your husband call me. It's okay. No, no, this is good. This is good, folks. Yeah. Very social people. It's just sometimes it's hard to break that. With, yeah. So it's good, yeah. Uh, just one question. You have educated me today, and that uh, Ramadan is the time to reflect and all these things. But well, two years ago, when we first came, we just uh, got into the Ramadan directive from Oof. other country. So my kids, we went to more. My kids can drink, can eat. We couldn't mm. understand, huh? Yeah, so yeah. Until today, they still, that's why I came today, that like, to understand the better Good. for myself. Now, sure, now sure. it's a reflection on everything. But now I, I'm all the time thinking when you're talking, how am I going to transfer all that information I got today to the kids? So I just want to know, how did you t talk to the, the kids? Or like uh, she said, the teenagers or kids. Mm -hmm. So they are dramatized. So, oh, Ramadan again? You know, to say, oh, we can drink. We don't. So is there any way that's like, I can just go tell them, Today I'm very benefited. I said I understand very well. We can adopt. How you can train them? Can you do you uh, do you have a hard time getting them off their gadgets, mm -hmm. their uh, their phone and the iPads? Yeah. Discipline, yeah. Mm -hmm. Patience. Can you do something else and then go back to it? Uh, can you get them to what? Wait for a meal rather than keep going grabbing snacks and eating junk food. Mm -hmm. 
begin to associate it. It's just what I try to do in teaching. Try to we we link, we associate, and so therefore. Uh, maybe you can tell them that on Friday we're going to do just do half a day of fasting. In the meantime, uh, honey, uh, when you are focused on your game, would you like somebody to scream? No, because they distract you. And so therefore, in Ramadan, when we go to the mall, there's a lot of these fasting people. So we can eat, we can drink, but discreetly. So therefore, we did. I mean, because for us, tourism, we don't want to kill tourism. You know, how are we going to do? This year, they announced that they will allow alcohol serving. Yeah, خلاص. Because you know the people is gonna inch towards Ramadan slowly, slowly will be like in the tourism season, you know, March, February as we go a few years. So slowly, slowly you gotta train the people. So whatever it is, the way I see it is, as long as Ramadan remain the atmosphere in public is feels like Ramadan, but you with your own um, desire and needs can be fulfilled in a private. So therefore, the food courts are open. There is a curtain. If you go to the IFC, where the people eat, but behind the curtain, uh, is this unhuman and civilized? Don't think about it that way. Think about it. Thank you for accommodating us, huh? And don't do like that guy did uh, French fries in the food court and walk around in the mall with the French fries and the people walking by smelling the French fries because they smell good always. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you have to link it to them. You know, try to say, honey, look, listen. This is the way you want it. Then the way they want, and then the way we should accept. Yeah. Yeah. Just like smokers, always is very simple. Smokers have to go outside the mall. Mm-hmm. So break it. people who are not fasting during Ramadan have to eat in private. Yeah. All good? Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much.